people doing the news every night. You know, Marie, it seems to me there are a lot of stories like this that we don't think are so important, but other people just might find interesting. Uh, the only people... way we'd do that story, Mary, if Roy Scutch were killed by an 11-pound turnip. Oh, Marie. Here's some changes. What are you cutting out? Oh, nothing. It's... Nothing? <clears throat> well, it's just uh, an idea for something I thought we might do on the show. Okay, let's hear it. Well, uh, it's going to be a surprise. Surprise me. Uh, surprise. Newsroom. Uh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Grant, New York. Come on, come on. What's your idea? Mr. Grant, I'll tell you later. Oh, all right. But don't forget, because I still want to hear about it. I got it. You're going to suggest Ted interview the turnip. <laughs> funny little human stories like this every once in a while. I mean, if the newspapers can do it. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> newspapers. Oh, <clears throat> I don't care much for them myself. Well, he's very blasé now, but you should have seen him run in and grab the paper when he heard Nancy and Sluggo broke up. <laughs> All right, you guys, kid around, but I've got very good reasons for not liking the newspapers. Oh, well, what are they? One, they're competition. And two... I always get that black stuff over my hands after I read it. <laughs> when people watch my show, they don't have to wash their hands. Oh, terrific, Ted. We can advertise a six o'clock news. Doesn't get your hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get your hands dirty. Hey, that's a good one, Mary. <laughs> did you hear that, Mary? Oh, come on, Ted. It wasn't that Hey, did you guys just hear what Mary said? <laughs> I'm going to tell this to Lou. <laughs> What can you expect from a guy whose favorite Mark's brother is Zeppo? Murray, Dr. Walter Reed Richards was honored with a dinner last night by the Roseburg Medical Association. Dr. Richards announced his retirement after 21 years as chief of surgery for the Roseburg County Hospital. I don't believe it. Murray, this is my father. Oh, Mary, you're kidding. I, I got a call home. Why didn't they tell me anything? Well, maybe they promised the newspaper a scoop. I talked to my mother three times last week. Wouldn't you think... Hello, Mom. It's Mary. Listen, Mother, how come you didn't tell me that Daddy was retiring? He didn't tell you? Well, yeah, I, I guess that's Dad. <laughs> well, uh, what are you going to do? What are you planning now that you've got retirement to look forward to? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and what about later today? <laughs> I mean, what are your plans? Oh, you are? Oh, uh, yeah, that, that's terrific. When? Okay. All right, Mom. Uh, call me later, then. Right. Bye-bye. Huh. What are they going to do? They're moving. Here. Mary, Don McDonald's joining me for lunch tomorrow, so make sure I have enough ice. Well, there you are, Lou. Lou. <laughs> you want to have a good belly laugh? Mary and I were talking, and I said, when people watch my show, they don't have to wash their hands. <laughs> and then Mary said... Well, Mr. Grant, it really wasn't funny at oh, all. Oh, come on, don't louse it up, Mary. I said, when people watch my show, they don't have to wash their hands. And then Mary said... We can advertise that the 6 o'clock news doesn't get your hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah. That isn't funny. <laughs> Come down off your bar stool. You want to go out and grab a sandwich? Oh, gee, I'd love to, but I can't. My parents are coming. Oh, wonderful. How long are they going to stay? Well, they're moving here. Can I have my wonderful back? Rhoda. Mary, do yourself a favor. Tell them to stay where they are or, or, or go someplace else or anything but come here. Rhoda, I could never do that. Well, then I'll do it. Don't worry. I'll make the call anonymous and in very good taste. It's too late. They've already left. They'll be here any minute. Mary, you have got to send them back the minute they get here. Listen to the voice of experience. When I lived in New York, my parents kept following me all over the Bronx. I'd move, they'd move. Once I told them I was moving, they moved, and I didn't. I thought I finally lost them, but no, they picked up my trail. So what could I do? You moved to Minneapolis. I moved to Minneapolis. Rhoda, it doesn't have to be that way. My parents and I have always gotten along just great. My mother is terrific. Uh-huh. No, really. My dates used to like her as much as they liked me. Oh, that's swell. There isn't enough competition running around. <laughs> Tell me, Mia, these uh, perfect parents are yours. 
Did he ever bring up the subject of why you aren't married? Well, uh, yeah. not directly. Every once in a while, my father used to mention that he was the only department head in the hospital who didn't have any grandchildren. <laughs> was that uh, his <laughs> or yours? Oh, no, that was his, just to let me know he was kidding. <laughs> hey, Rhoda, you remember that party I gave and your date made those dumb paper airplanes? Yeah. A little souvenir. <laughs> hey, you know, I haven't seen him for since that evening either. See if he's up there, huh? <laughs> Boy, no wonder I haven't seen him. Here's my phone number. <laughs> well, what do you think? How does the apartment look? Clean enough? Clean enough for what? For my father. You see? Do you see what's happening? They aren't even here yet, and you are cleaning an already clean apartment. No, duh. It's just that my father's never been here, and I want the place to look clean. So uh, how tall is your father, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because Daddy's in surgery, but he's always been very particular about everything he comes in contact with being germ-free. Oh. Where are you going? I gotta boil my sweatshirt. Hi. Now hug your father first, because I'm gonna take time with you. <laughs> Hiya, Dad. How are you, Bones? <laughs> oh, uh, Mom, honey. Uh, <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's so good to be here. Oh, wow. Uh, doesn't your father look great? You'd never guess that he's 16 years older than I am, now would you? That's a new record for working it in fast. Uh, oh, honey, it's so terrific to be here. Remember the last time I was here and we went shopping together and people mistook us for sisters? Yeah. I always loved that. Hey, now, Walt, Walt, isn't this a darling place? Yeah. What are you paying, Mary, about 100? Uh, yeah, about 100. And? 30. Uh, five. In Rollsburg, you can get a whole house for that. No, you can't. That's what our house payment was. No, 135 wasn't our house payment. That was our phone bill. <laughs> Mary, this place, does it have a John or is it in a hole? Oh, yes, Dad, it has a John. It's right in here. I want to wash my hands. Dad, I'm a big girl now. You don't have to say that anymore. Oh, yes, I do. I got them filthy on that banister out there. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, honey, we're going to have to start looking for an apartment soon, and I want a place just like this, only bigger and newer. <laughs> well, I'll uh, take you around on Sunday. It'll be fun to see all the apartments I couldn't afford. <laughs> How do you think you're going to like living in Minneapolis? It's going to be pretty different from Roseburg. Right. Mary, I want you to know that moving here wasn't my idea. It was your father's. Oh. What are you going to do, Mom, now that Dad's retired? Well, I kind of thought I'd go back and finish nursing school. Oh, Mother, you've been saying that for years. Well... That's your mother's way of reminding everyone just how young she was when we got married. <laughs> you know, Dad, I was really surprised you decided to move to Minneapolis. Mary, it wasn't my idea. Oh, but Mother said... Oh, this is good cheese, Mary. What kind is it? It's so different. It's called American. <laughs> Walt, would you like some American cheese? Uh, no, no thanks. Uh, Mother, didn't you just say that... Walt, Walt, you've got to admit now that Minneapolis offers a bigger variety of things to do now, doesn't it? Walt. Mary, isn't that the plate I got for your mother at the Seattle World's Fair? Yeah. Had an inscription on it that said... Um... Seattle World's Fair? Yeah, something like that. Read the back. Oh, yeah. To Dottie from Walter. <laughs> Your father's the last of the romantics. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mary. Hi. <laughs> I uh, could come back after inspection. Rhoda. Hey, I was thinking about that idea you were going to give me. You know your surprise? Yeah, you were? Yeah. I knew it had something to do with the paper. Then I figured it out. You're going to suggest that we replace Ted by televising newspaper clippings, uh, aren't you? No, Mr. Grant. Oh, that's too bad, because it's a good idea. <laughs> What's your suggestion? Well, I was going to work up a whole presentation for you, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I haven't had the time. Um, well, anyway, what I thought we might do is just use stories like this on the news. You mean to say we missed out on the turnip story? <laughs> okay, Mr. Grant.
Grant. Biggest turn-up story of the century, and we missed out. Mr. Grant, hey. Sorry, Lou. It was either that or the yam that looked like Millet Fillmore. I blew it, Lou. An honest, honest mistake. Well, don't let it happen again. Well, if you like it that much, I'll type it up for you, Lou. Yeah, this is this is what I love about working here. I mean, you guys are just so much fun. After that, you're still looking for cute little stories? I'm looking for a cute little apartment for my parents. Oh, what part of Minneapolis are you looking in? St. Paul. St. Paul? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's nice over there. It's, um, it's quiet over there. And, and it's, it's over there, right? <laughs> Listen, it's, it's not that I don't love them, you know? I mean, I really have enjoyed this last week with them. It's just that I, I think I've outgrown spending all my free time with them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do they have any friends here? No. Hoping I can find an apartment with some friendly people. You're looking for a friendly apartment, Mayor? Why don't you move into my building? Oh, well, gosh, Ted, I don't think I could stand all that happiness. <laughs> anyway, it's not for me. It's for my folks. Well, that's still all right. There's plenty of vacancies. I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, Ted, don't you live in one of those swinging singles buildings? Yeah, it's swell. We've got a social director, sweet rolls on Sundays, volleyball tournaments. Of course, I'm the biggest celebrity there. Oh? The guy with the chimp must have moved. <laughs> My mom lives there, too. Y your mom? Well, she's single. But she was married once, wasn't she, Ted? Oh, sure. Everybody loves mom. If, if your folks move into the building, they'd love her, too. Yeah, well, the thing is, they're not single, Ted. Oh, yeah. Well, if they ever decide to break up, send them over. <laughs> He's a happy man, Murray. I know. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Excuse me, is this where... Oh, hi, Mary. Dad! Hi! What are you doing here? I was at the hospital right around the corner. You were at the, the hospital? Is anything wrong? Uh-huh. Oh, just dropped in to watch a couple of operations. Well, how were they? Fair. Uh, they don't even give you a private office, huh? Oh, well, Dad, see, a newsroom is like that. You know, everything's sort of out in the open. Nobody has any secrets, so nobody needs an office. Um, except for Mr. Grant. He's got a, you know, not that he has any secrets or anything. He's just, you know, got a, um, and a, Murray, this is my dad, Dad Murray Slaughter. Uh, Murray talks about you all the time. It's Murray. a pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> this is really a nice surprise. Come on, I'll buy you lunch. Oh, gee, Dad, I'd like to, but Well, I... if you can't make it, I, uh, I understand. No, 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 no. I'll rearrange a few things. Hey, right. I got a couple of apartments that I think are kind of interesting. Oh, we already rented one this morning. You did? Mm -hmm. Uh, here in, uh, Minneapolis? Yeah. Where else? Oh, well, no, I was just thinking it might be over in, uh, St. Uh... Well, whereabouts? Well, after we, uh, had breakfast with you this morning, we just drove round and round until we found this place. I've got the address right here. Dad, that's right around the corner from my place. She couldn't find anything in your building. <laughs> Gosh, Mom, I don't think 11.30 is so late. Uh, well, I guess I better be going. Hey, Mayor. Honey, do you have an extra key? Why, are you going to come back tonight, Mom? Well, uh, Phyllis has had let me in a couple of times the past few days, and you know, I, I really didn't want to bother her. Oh, well, it's no, it's no bother. Phyllis, Phyllis doesn't mind doing things like that. Well, good. I'll get her to make me a key. Hey, Rhoda, yeah. would you like to go to a movie later? Sure. As long as it's not one of those sexy ones, you know? All those naked bodies just remind me of work. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what is it you do, dear? Uh, oh, mannequins. I dress mannequins in a store window. <laughs> Thank heavens. <laughs> well, have a good time, honey. What time do you think you'll be home? Uh, gee, I, I don't know, Mom. <laughs> well, have a good time anyway, dear. And don't forget, tomorrow's a working day. I won't. Hey, Rhoda, I'll pick you up at 8, okay? Good deal. And listen, I'm not going to change. Oh, no, me neither. Be prepared, they'll take us for suspense. <laughs> Probably, though. Bye. So long. 
Gee, I can hardly believe she's your mother. Yeah? Why? Oh, Mary, she's so young. She's, she's just like a, a regular person. If my mother was here, she'd be driving me crazy. Rhoda, she's driving me crazy. <laughs> I know. Does it show? You think my mother knows? They never know. <laughs> Mother. Who is it? Rhoda. Can you give me a list of work? My car has got the Asian flu. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Mary, you going to a formal breakfast party? No. It's got cold. Must have had some great time. Look, Rhoda, whatever I did, it's my own business, okay? That good, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't meant for you. Oh, uh, who was it meant for? For my mother. Ah. Every time I come home late, the phone is ringing. When I pick it up, the person on the other end hangs up. Rhoda, my mother is checking up on me. Ah, oh, I broke my zipper. You see, every time you yell at your mother, God makes you break your zipper. <laughs> Look, I realize that she's the best mother a person could have, but no matter how hard she tries, she's still my mother. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, kid. Look, it goes with the territory. I feel every time I'm going to be late coming home that I have to call her so she doesn't worry. Who would have thought it? What? This happens to Protestants, too. <laughs> I would just like to be able to go out and stay out all night if I feel like it without coming home and finding the phone ringing. Are you wearing shorty nightgowns to work these days? Work. 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 <laughs> Rust. Mother, what are you doing here? Well, I had some extra meatloaf left over, and I knew you'd be tired and wouldn't feel like cooking. You, uh, just happened to know that I'd retired, huh? Well, you worked all day, didn't you? Look, you can barely hold your eyes open. Mom, my eyes have never been opener, and as uh, for the dinner, thank you, but, but I have a pizza. Oh, Mary, you can't eat that. Mother, I'm going to eat my pizza. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can have the meatloaf tomorrow. It's always better when it's left over anyway, so I'll just leave it over. I was just on my way out anyhow. Hey, Mom. Huh? Um, thanks for the meatloaf. I made it just the way you like it. How was your date last night? Fine, thanks. What did you do? Mother, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I know what it is. Uh, what? You always get cranky when you're sleepy. You've been like that ever since you were a baby. Mom, listen, I'm not a baby anymore. See, I, d I don't need my mommy bringing me meatloaves, and I especially don't need her checking up on me every minute. Well, I haven't been checking up on you. Oh, come on, Mom. What, what do you call this meatloaf if it's not checking up on me? Maybe I have been around here too much, but... It it's not because I've been checking Mom, up on you. Mom, but you haven't been around here too much. Why, why have you been around here so much? Because I like you. Well, Mom, I like you too. But liking doesn't have anything to do with it. Well, if I knew you felt so strongly about it, I wouldn't have brought the meatloaf. Mother, we are not talking about the meatloaf. Well, then what are we talking about? Bridget, Mom, will you stop crying? That isn't fair. I'm not crying. <laughs> Mom, we are talking about the phone call this morning. Now, if that's not checking up on me, then I don't know what is. What phone call? Oh, Mother, you know what phone call. <laughs> Who is it? Me. I went home thinking I might get some dinner. Whoops, don't let me kill the fun. No, Dad. <laughs> Please, Dad, stay. Mother, are you telling me that you didn't call me this morning and then hang up when I answered? 
Hang up? Why would I call you and then hang up? Well, then if you didn't call, who did? I did. <laughs> you, you did? That's right. I got home from my AMA meeting at 11 o'clock, a respectable hour, expecting to find my wife there. And when she wasn't, I called here and my daughter wasn't home either. Well, Miss Nightlife here finally showed up at 12.30. But by then, I was so used to calling you, I just kept it up until 8.27 this morning. You got home at 8.27 this morning? <laughs> More or less, yes, Dad. As long as you were on the phone, why, why didn't you just say hi? Because I didn't want you to think I was checking up on you. <laughs> I figured since you were well enough to answer the phone, everything was okay. I shouldn't have hung up. Well, I certainly agree with you there. What I should have done was ask you where the hell you were until 827. <laughs> Dad, look, I am over 30 years old. I don't have to answer that. I don't care how old you are. You're still my daughter, and I've still got the right to worry about you. Okay, okay, look. When you lived in Roseburg, you didn't know where I was half the time. It didn't bother you then. Oh, yes, it did. Well, plenty of times I, I started to pick up the phone, but I didn't. You, well, why, why didn't you? Well, I... Long distance. <laughs> well, as long as you're both here, you want to have dinner? What do you say, Daddy? Well, as long as we're not in the way. Oh, no. oh, we're not in the way. <laughs> we'll have um, meatloaf and um, sloppy uh, pizza. <laughs> Fortunately, I made enough meatloaf for the three of us. <laughs> I'll just go warm it up. You know, you still haven't told us what you did last night. I know. You're not going to tell us. Oh, Dottie, I guess we'll just have to get used to that. You're right. We'll just have to get used to that. <laughs> we'll never get used to that. <laughs> by an American Secretary of Agriculture to Miami Beach. Who timed this show? We're going to end up about a minute short. Give me something quick. I don't want him staring at the camera with a silly look on his face. Phil discussions to throw his head out of the ring. How can you tell when a man with a silly look on his face gets a silly look on his face? Well, that's the news for tonight. This is Ted Baxter saying, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Hold it, hold it. I've just been handed this late-breaking bulletin. Royal Scotch of Winnebago had a surprise yesterday when he harvested his crop and found an 11-pound turnip. Repeating that bulletin, 